Different types of parts require different types of operations. This is especially true in the case of the crankshaft. In order to get the results called for by the engineering group, we had to design and construct crankshaft lathes in our own tool section. This Swiss jig bore is typical of the machines we use to build the special equipment we must have to turn out crankshafts that fulfill our engineering specifications. But if any part deserves special handling, the crankshaft does, because it is the backbone of the engine. Special center drive lathes rough turn the gear end, number one, four, and seven main journals, and the crankshaft flange. Special end drive lathes rough turn the crank pins. Main and connecting rod journals are ground, but only after grinding wheels have been trued up by diamond dressers, so that the plus or minus one ten thousandth tolerance can be held. Crank pins and oil passages are reamed and polished the same way that they are in aviation engines. Then after counterweights have been attached, the crankshaft is balanced. This machine practically talks. Watch the top of the dial. It registers not only the slightest degree of out of balance, but also tells exactly where it's located. Material is removed accordingly from one or more counterweights until the constant position of the dial needle indicates that the crankshaft is in absolute balance. The machining operations are completed, provided that the inspector finds it passes the 23 items on the inspection checklist. And now with main and connecting rod bearing surfaces protected by heavy oil paper, the crankshaft is ready to be moved to the final assembly line. And when it gets there, these connecting rod forgings must be machined and ready too. Strong, reliable, precision made. In addition to boring the rod, there are more than 50 operations. Some of these steps could be combined, inspections eliminated, and thereby make it easier to live up to production schedules. But we don't do it that way. The cap is assembled to the connecting rod by bolts and nuts tightened to a definite tension by torque wrenches. Whenever the caps are taken off, they are always reinstalled to exactly the same tension. Now when the crank pin end is balanced, and when the wrist pin end is balanced, the weight of the connecting rod is held to the small tolerance of plus or minus 125 thousandths of an ounce. Wrist pin and crank pin holes are held to a tolerance of two and a half ten thousandths, and a precision ground for absolute smoothness. That's to ensure full contact on the backs of the bearings. This makes for good heat dissipation and long bearing life. The bushings are diamond bored on another machine, specially constructed in our plant to hold them to a tolerance of plus or minus one ten thousandths. Large bolts, uniform web section, sides polished, perfectly balanced. More than 50 operations are the reason this connecting rod will do its job. There are no shortcuts to long life, and no shortcuts are taken in producing any component part. But in all the operations of machining the aluminum piston, counter boring, slotting under the ring groove, multiple turning the ring grooves, None is so important as diamond boring the wrist pin hole. The inside diameter is held to one ten thousandth of an inch. Incidentally, one ten thousandth is about one twenty-fourth of the width of a human hair. Rocker arm bushings are also diamond bored. When installed in an engine, the rocker arm shoe is subject to great forces. That is why stellite, the toughest of all alloys, is welded onto the steel. And while still hot, ground to ensure correct welding. The finished grind is made later. Exhaust manifolds to resist the terrific heat to which they are subjected are made of hull chrome alloy. They are made in three sections with slip joint diameters ground to the specified tolerance of half a thousand. This makes the joint gas tight without packing. The men in the shop have taken a personal pride in making these parts as well as parts can be made. There have been no shortcuts. 
The specifications have called for production with the emphasis on quality for long life and economy. To make absolutely sure that they are fulfilled, the engineering department where the specifications originate has control over both the inspection and processing sections. And even before machining begins, parts are annealed and sandblasted to remove internal stresses and surface scale. Other parts are heat treated, but this isn't enough. On the job inspection isn't enough. Nor is checking dimensions according to the blueprints. Nor is checking the diameter of the wrist pin to a quarter of a thousand with an amplifying gauge. Every inspection check is important, for inspectors' eyes are trained to see. But that still isn't enough. If there are any flaws which cannot be seen, we must find them too. That is why all highly stressed parts are magnafluxed. The part is magnetized and flooded by a light oil bath in which fine metallic particles are suspended. If there are any internal cracks, the metal particles will be attracted to and held on the surface over the internal crack. No human eye could possibly find the hidden flaws made visible by the magnaflux. And when the particles leave their telltale mark, there is only one thing to do with the part. Reject it. And finally, every part is thoroughly cleaned to remove all metal chips, grit, or any other foreign matter. Now, these parts designed and machined, inspected, magnafluxed, okayed and cleaned, have a date on the final assembly line. And it is here that precision manufacture begins to pay its first dividend. There is no last minute hammering or filing. All parts fit without forcing, just as they were designed to fit. It can be expected that the men in our plant will assemble our engines quickly and expertly. They have had years of training and experience. But the precision manufacture, the accessibility of unit construction make it just as easy for any average mechanic to maintain the engine in any shop. These factors, coupled with complete interchangeability, result not only in minimum maintenance operations, but also in minimum time spent at the bench. These engines are assembled for the same purpose that the parts are built to give service. And off the production lines they come, the Defender, the 440, the Invader, 